So this video is on aldehydes and ketones. And our um, aims for this video are to be able to um, uh, to basically know the chemical test that distinguishes between aldehydes and ketones and know why it distinguishes between them. Draw a mechanism for the reduction of aldehydes and ketones using sodium borohydride. And um, draw the mechanism for the reaction between carbonyl compounds and with hydrogen cyanide to create hydroxynitriles. So firstly, the chemical test to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, um, there are two of them. But before we can go into them, we need to understand why the aldehydes and ketones can be distinguished between. So if we look at um, propanol, so there's propanol, and propanone, you will see that the, the carbonyl group here is attached to a carbon with two carbons either side. So these carbon-carbon bonds are much stronger than a carbon-hydrogen bond. And so this can be oxidized further, whereas ketones cannot. Um, for a similar reason to why primary alcohols can be oxidized and secondary alcohols can be oxidized, but a tertiary alcohol can't. Um, and these can be oxidized really easily with either Tollens reagent, or failing solution. And basically what you're looking for is a positive reaction. For a ketone there won't be a positive reaction so you'll see no visible change for both. Because the reason why you'll see a change is because this molecule here will be being oxidized and these um, reagents are being reduced. And when Tollens reagent gets reduced by an aldehyde, it forms a silver mirror. So all you'd need to write for what you see is a silver mirror for an aldehyde. And for Fehling solution, you'll see a brick red precipitate. And it's important you write precipitate because it's not a solution, it's a solid that's formed. Um, so those are the two tests you could use to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. Tollens reagent and Fehling solution, it's important to realise that you cannot use those for alcohols. They will only oxidise um, an aldehyde. Now, reducing agents um, are something you have to have a, a bit of understanding of for Chem 4. There are four different reducing agents for four different things. So, to go from a CN, a nitrile group, to an NH2, you need something different than if you're going from um, a nitro group to an amine group. Or if you're going from a carbonyl group to the alcohol. Or if you're going from an, um, an alkene to an alkane. Now alkene to an alkane is nickel and a hydrogen catalyst. Um, nitro group to an amine group is HCl with a tin catalyst. A nitrile group to um, to an amine group, you could use the following compound, a L I A L H four, and for a carbonyl group to a um, alcohol, you can use N A B H four, and that's the one we're going to be focusing on um, for this mechanism here. So if I just delete all that. Now, when you're writing a mechanism with NaBH4, you don't write the whole thing, you just use um, an H- ion, because that's essentially what you're adding to the compound, an H-. minus. Um, so if we do it for, if we just do it for a ketone, and we'll use propanone as our example, we use H-, minus. there's going to be attacking, the lone pair on H-, minus will attack the carbon and our oxygen um, will gain a negative charge because the lone pair will break. Uh, sorry, not the lone pair, the door bond will break. And so what you'll get is the following molecule, or the following intermediate, I should say. 
And then what happens is this this O minus will go out, grab an H plus, and you'll form the alcohol. And that alcohol will be called propan ol So the reaction between um, hydrogen cyanide and carbonyl groups are very similar to the reaction between um, the H- and the previous slide and the carbonyl group. So we're going to start with the same compound, so you can see the similarity. So start with propan propanone, and we're going to be using the Cn- sign, which is the first thing that reacts with the hydrogen cyanide. Got a lone pair on the C, and the negative charge is also on the carbon, actually, and that attacks the carbon of the carbonyl group, and our double bond breaks to form an O minus. So we make the following intermediate with an O minus on it, and the CN group attached below. That O minus will then go out and attack and grab an H plus ion, and what will form is the following compound. I'm going to draw it slightly differently to how it's drawn above just because the nitrile group now becomes the functional group of the compound. So we name it based on the fact it's got a nitrile group in it. So we've got three carbons in the chain, so it's propanitrile. And then you've got to talk about what else is there. So we've named this bit here, we've got a hydroxy group and we've got a methyl group. Now hydroxy is before methyl in, in alphabetically, so we're going to be 2 hydroxy 2 methyl propanitrile. If you need more help with naming or the mechanisms, then please let me know.